Hello, Anil. Hi, hi Judy. <laughs> Good to see you what, what, again. <laughs> Good to see you. What time is it there in California? Oh, gosh, 8.25 in the morning on a wow. foggy morning. Wow, we, we're edging 9 o'clock and in, in the evening. In the evening, yikes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Other raining over here. World. Other side yeah. of the world, right? Yeah, yeah. And last year, this time, I was in that part of the world. I know. Last year, this time, we were up at the university. We had sunshine, right? Yeah, it was summer. Yeah, well, it's summer still here again, but we've had fog almost all summer, which is a typical Santa Cruz summer. Uh, yeah, I, I remember it. It used to suddenly rain in the morning till 11 o'clock, and then it used to, to be so hot after that. It, yeah, that fog. It, fog, yeah. fog drip. In fact, I think Mark Twain said the coldest winter he ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. Wow, look at the, the fog, look at the trance it's so there. chilly. Yeah, because the That's fog the is so chilly. Cool, yeah. great. We, we're all excited to hear from you. On, on the topic of wisdom and veils of misconception. And it is so obvious that we all have the veils and we have the misconception. So tell me, tell me something more about this topic. This topic is very sort of close to my heart because it, it deals with two things. One, the idea of wisdom, you know, mm -hmm. and where does wisdom come from in a way? And the other around the veils, as you say, you know, what are these sort of curtains that we have in front of our eyes that sometimes we open up and experience the world in kind of a new way. Um, originally, it was related to the concept of Buddhism. You know, my assumptions is that everything is, per things are permanent, mm -hmm. right? When they're not. And uh, as a physicist will know, everything's still moving, even though it's so slow, I, yeah. so slow I can't see it moving or feel it moving, but it is moving and changing. But I, because I can't see it happening, I assume that it's permanent, you know, yeah. and I forget. And when I forget, it causes suffering. It does. Because I want it to stay permanent. I want it yeah. hold on and, and keep something as it is. and and. And then I struggle with letting it go. Yeah. That's one. I think feeling myself a member of a larger system is another, you know, where I feel like I'm separate. That's a veil because I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> because I'm not, you know, but I have that sense. Then that's another kind of veil. So the idea of the veils was what are the smoke screens? You know, yeah. what are the ways that I kind of create and insulate myself from change really, you know, or growth is how I would say it. Um, part of that has to do with wisdom for me comes out of connectedness. It comes out of the connectedness between my head and my heart. It comes out of the connectedness between my head, heart and the outside world with yeah. other people, with nature, that in that set of connections is where wisdom emerges. And as I look at what's going on in the world right now, in terms of COVID, in terms of the impact economically around the world and, and the amount of uncertainty that people are having to hold for such a long period of time. I mean, we're all used to holding uncertainty for a little while, right? Yeah. But it's been, what, seven months now or six months now, and we really can't see yet, yeah. I think, the light at the end of that tunnel. Um, there's still question marks around that. So it's really um, pulling on us in a way <laughs> to bring forward certain connectedness inside. I can't control the constraints externally, but I can have a choice over my own internal world. Yeah. That I, I can have a choice. Yeah. And I think this, for me, this workshop is about what is the quality of my inner state of being? How can I manage resistance in myself? And how can I hold two truths at the same time? How, wow. how do I deal with dilemma? I think that's really the landscape so that I can expand. Yeah. I guess that's how I would really say it. I think that's so beautifully put, knowing the quality of the inner world, the landscape, to know the resistance and then to use the right tools to expand. Exactly. Yes. 
So if I, if, I, if I can bring self-awareness to a state, you know, just bring some self-awareness and go, this is what it is happening here. Mm. You know, can I calibrate it some way on a scale of one to five and go, you know, how bad is it? <laughs> can I do anything in there to shift it already without help, just because I've created a space for that possibility? Yeah. And then can I hold it? Can I find a way to hang on to it when I, so I can yeah. grow from that space? Yeah. yeah. Holding is such an important thing. It's not this, it's not that. Going beyond the dilemma, like you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. And we all have veils. Um, how do we easily recognize these veils in our lives? Or what are the most common misconceptions that you found in people when they come to you? Well, I think it's when we have a goal for ourselves, when we have a goal, set a goal. So I, I go, I realize that I, I am suffering in some way, or I realize that my state of being is not, I'm not well in that state of being. Then I go, where's the veil? What stops you from changing it? There's, there's the veil. Yeah. If I have a belief barrier, you know, if I want to achieve something, but I believe I can't, that's the veil. So how do I kind of bring that forward? Yeah, and it could um, be in relations, it could be in career, it could be in profession, it could it be does, in all aspects. It doesn't aspects. matter if you're human. <laughs> if you're human, <laughs> yeah, unless you're turning into an alien when you go to work. <laughs> So what about those people who have not done NLP, not heard NLP, or not learned NLP? Um, could they be a part of this workshop? And what would their response, what would well, your response would, be to that? Yeah, what I would have to say to that is the, the one thing, if I go there, was one thing in NLP that I loved from the beginning was the fact that it starts with the fact that, that we're all the same. Instead of it, instead of starting from how we're different, we're all the same because we're people. <laughs> we're members of the same species. <laughs> we all make images in our head. <laughs> yeah. We talk to ourselves, maybe different language, but we most of us still talk to ourselves. Yeah. Uh, and we have feelings and sensations. We have hopes and we have dreams. And it starts from that basis. So if you think, if you have a, a mind and you think, if you talk to yourself and have dreams and images, <laughs> if you have good states and bad states of being, then yeah, you're going to learn. <laughs> you don't have to be educated in NLP because you're already educated as a human. Yeah. And I haven't human. been anywhere in the world that people don't have these realities. This is how we're built. Yeah, all of this us. is yeah. us. This is us. Yeah. So it, so I guess my message would be uh, to, to really ride the wave of uncertainty yeah. uh, because it's uncertain <laughs> and it, it is a wave. And, but we can ride the wave with a lot of grace and a lot of balance and creativity. Yeah. And that would be my message. Ride the wave that do it with grace, creativity, and style, because we can do it. <laughs> Isn't that Judy at its best? That's what I say. If you're not writing it, you're going to get caught in it, most likely, <laughs> most likely, because then you feel overwhelmed and caught in trying to keep your head above the water. No, yeah, no. ride the wave. Use the energy well. Yeah.